Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we're going to be discussing the Pokedex from Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and why there needs desperately to be changes made from what it was in the original games and even in Platinum. One of the biggest weaknesses of Generation 4 has always been the Pokedex, the one that everyone points to, the severe lack of fire type families within the regional Sinnoh region. That needs to be fixed. It needs to be overhauled if it was up to me. I would introduce Pokemon from older games, from newer games. I would spruce up the Pokedex in a lot of ways to make the in-game experience that much better for players. That being said, we have a lot to discuss on this topic, so let's jump right into things. Before we even get into the, the deeper parts of this topic, we need to address the most irritating part of the original Diamond and Pearl games, and one that got slightly fixed, slightly, in Platinum. And that is the fire types in the Pokedex. If you do not choose Chimchar and eventually have your fighting fire type Infernape, if you do not pick him as your starter in Diamond and Pearl, the only other fire types that you have available to you is either Magmortar in its, in its final form or Rapidash. The Ponyduff line and the Magmar line, or the Magby line, are the only other fire type families in an entire region. That. <laughs> how it, it, it. To this day, the oversight doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but it's one that happened. We have to deal with it. We'll move on. So, the first fix that Game Freak and Ilka need to do is we need more fire type families. There's so many to choose from. Add Torkoal. He'd be an easy fix. Torkoal is one of my personal favorite fire type Pokemon ever. He's from generation three, so it's not as if you'd be pulling from generations beforehand. Add in, here's the, well, before you even get to the deeper things, this is the biggest fix that they can do. You need to ditch the Diamond and Pearl decks, and you need to pull straight from the Platinum decks for the core Sinnoh region, regional decks. We're not talking about the national decks, because once you beat the game, you can bring in any Pokemon you want in the originals, and you can trade in Pokemon if you want to do an abnormal playthrough. You can always bring Pokemon in, trade them to your game, use them. All of that still exists, but when talking specifically about the regional decks, adding more fire types is the number one thing. Bring in the Houndoom line. Houndoom line was in Platinum, it was not in Diamond and Pearl. Bring him into the regional decks. Doing these little things just as a base, taking Platinum and using it as the core for these games in across the board, not even with the Pokedex, but just with every aspect of Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, use what was in Platinum. Whether if it was the story, if it was the decks, if it was the choice of trainer, uh, trainer Pokemon, that's everything you need to do. With that being said, variety is the key for fixing the Pokedex. You need to not only make it so there's more Pokemon in the regional decks, but you also need to space out the Pokemon that are there. Some of the key examples are the number of routes that include the evolutionary trees of the Starly line, of the Bidoof line, of the Krikatot line, of the Shinx line. It's littered about the Sinnoh region. When you first start in your game and you're going through some of the early routes up to Orberg City, you're getting all these Pokemon in their first forms. You're getting the Beedoofs, which if you guys did not celebrate Beedoof Day the other day, happy Beedoof Day, you're getting your Shinxes, you're getting your Starlies, and as you move up in the region, you're getting your Staravias, your Bee Barrels, your Krikatoons, you're getting your Luxios eventually, the middle form of the Luxray line. These are choices that it's fine. If you, if you don't catch one of these Pokemon earlier on in the game and you want to add this guy to your team, one of the most famous examples is that you can get a Staravia right after Hard Home City. If you did not catch a Starly and you need a flying type, having Staravia there is really handy. The same as this is the same as said with Bee Barrel. Bee Barrel is also one that's readily available once you get into that beginning of the middle portion of the game. But ultimately, it feels like a lot of padding, and it's something that I think they could fix by adding more of these Pokemon, adding more birds, more flying variant options. If HMs are going to return, you're going to want more flyers. For most players, they usually go with the Staraptor or they go with Driftblim for their flying Pokemon. You've got other ones, but those are the main ones. So adding other Pokemon like Pidgey, adding Pidgey into the region, adding Pokemon like Hoot Hoot. Hoot Hoot is in the original, but he is a, a nighttime exclusive and he's exclusive to very few routes. Expanding these routes and adding more Pokemon into each of them will do a ton to break up the variety and make it feel like you're encountering more of a variety of Pokemon than just the ones that we've had for years now. Now, before we go deeper into this topic, I just want to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching and who are hopefully enjoying this discussion video aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time, and it would really do a ton to show me that you guys are enjoying these videos and that you want to see more like them in the future. So if that button is still red for you, sure to hit it. Do a ton to support me. I'd really appreciate it. For people who have not played 
the original diamond, pearl, or platinum. This is a piece that Game Freak has largely gotten right in most of their releases. Most generations have a healthy dose of when you can capture certain Pokemon, but it's something that I think Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have a chance to fix about Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. For as much of, for as much love and adoration that Generation 4 gets, one of the biggest problems in my mind is when certain Pokemon become available and the difficulty at which other Pokemon are available. One of the most iconic instances is catching Feebas to get a Milotic. Feebas is famous because there's a certain pool inside Mount Coronet that you can catch Feebas, but every single version of the, of the game has it randomized to a specific tile. So not only do you need to find the tile that Feebas is in, but you then need to fish in it and find the, the low percentage chance that Feebas is there. That it's un, <laughs> it's unnecessarily difficult, unnecessarily difficult. Especially when in modern games, these Pokemon are more available. My Lodic in Sword and Shield is just chilling in an open world lake. He's just vibing there. You can get him at any point you want as long as you find the right day and time. It's not tile specific and it's not as convoluted as this is. Feebas should be a Pokemon that is more readily available. Maybe you make it available in certain pools, maybe certain times of the day, but the way in which you encounter some of these Pokemon needs to change. The other Pokemon that's incredibly iconic for this is Munchlax. In every single copy of these original games, Munchlax exists on one, one Honeybark tree in the entire Sinnoh region. So not only do you have to find the tree, but you then have to slather it with honey and wait to see if it starts shaking to find it. And even if you get the tree that, Mud that Munchlax is on, you're not guaranteed to catch it. It's not the only encounter that can be there. So if you miss it, you're gonna get your Apoms and you're gonna get your, I believe Yanma's on there. You're gonna get your Combees, all of these different things. You're not even guaranteed the Munchlax. Snorlax is a great Pokemon. It's a fan favorite. It's one of the most iconic Generation 1 Pokemon, and it's one of the most iconic Pokemon in the franchise. It should not be... You should not have to give up an arm and a leg to get some of these Pokemon. With that same vein, there's a lot of families that are just incredibly difficult to find. Some Pokemon which you can find in the Safari Zone are ridiculously difficult because of their odds percentages to find them. One of the most iconic examples is Krogunk. If you want a Toxicroak, or if you want a Skaroopy, the encounter rates are stupid low in the Safari Zone, and you have to go to different levels to find it. It's This has always been my biggest criticism with Pokemon games. There is such a large and vast amalgamation of characters and Pokemon that you can choose from to use on a team. And if you want to increase the variety in which players use on their teams, I don't think it's necessarily good padding to make certain Pokemon so difficult to find that you have to pull out a guidebook in order to find it. You should be able to use context clues from the game or just consult the Pokedex and simply see the route that they're on. Now, of course, you can see routes that most Pokemon are on, but there's also additional features on routes that make it more difficult to find. One of the more iconic parts, and this is one where I think they do a good job, is Gibble. You can only catch Gibble in Wayward Cave. Wayward Cave is under the cycling bridge. There's a chance that you could play through the entire game and you might not find Wayward Bridge. You might not find the cave under the bridge, the cycling road. You just might not know it's there. But if you are exploring every single corner of the Sinnoh region, you're going to find that cave because you're going to be doing your due diligence. You're going to be going down every path that's blocked by uh, by trees that you need to cut down and you're going to find it eventually. It's, it's hidden even. It's interesting. It's hidden like under the bridge. So because of where the camera is, you can't even see it. That's good. That encourages exploration. That is something that I think we should do more of in Pokemon games. But the way they handle Pokemon like Feebas, the way they handle Pokemon like Munchlax, these Pokemon should be available. If you're gonna fix Munchlax, just put them on every tree and make them a 1% encounter. It would do a ton to let people use some of these Pokemon more. It would do a ton to increase team variants. There's a popular meme that goes around on social media showing off that everyone's like, oh, I'm gonna use this Pokemon and this Pokemon and this Pokemon in their run-throughs of Gen 4, and then they end up using literally the same team every time. Everyone's got their starter, then they've got a Luxray, they've got a Star Raptor, they've got a Garchomp. They've, they basically use the exact same Pokemon. They got B-Barrel as their HM user, they're set encourage more variety and by encouraging more variety the simplest way to do that make more pokemon available it's the simplest way to fix things with that same vein one of the other things that they need to do a better job of is allowing you to catch certain pokemon earlier there's a lot of pokemon that are gated to the second half of the game once you go to the east of mount coronet you're kind of in the other part of the Sinnoh region you play the first part of the game on the on the western side of mount coronet 
and then eventually you track back over to get to Canalave City, Iron Island, these different later game locations, but there's no variants in Pokemon there. A lot of really cool Pokemon are blocked to the, to the, to the eastern side of Mount Coronet. Put some of these Pokemon in different specific areas of grass patches. One of the things that we get access to in newer Pokemon games is that it's not only that Pokemon are specific to routes, but they're specific to certain grass patches on the routes. By introducing something like this, you could give us more variation in some of the cooler, more rare, more uncommonly used Pokemon and put them in some of the earlier routes. It would allow for better team variation and it would allow for people to not, again, use the exact same Pokemon per playthrough. The big philosophy here with everything we're discussing with the decks is just giving the player character more ability to customize their team, make their adventure more unique, make it more accessible, and make it something that they can really show off to their friends and be like, this is my team. It's very different from the team that you're using. Oh, let's have a battle. It'll encourage multiplayer battling because everyone's going to have different Pokemon and different teams and people are going to want to see what different Pokemon they chose to use in their playthrough. I'm going on a large tangent about ways to make Pokemon more interactive and social, but it, regardless to be said, they can do a lot with the Pokedex, and hopefully they will. Now, with that being said, I've highlighted four or five key changes that I think they need to make to the Pokedex, and I didn't go into a ton of detail in the first part discussing just adding more Pokemon, because there's a ton of analysis videos that are already out there where they're basically going through the roster of Pokemon, and they're picking out specific families that they want to bring into Sinnoh. I think adding more as a whole and adding more options per type is ultimately the best way to go about it. I don't even mind what they choose because I'm the kind of player that really doesn't pick Pokemon specifically because, oh, I really love their designer. Oh, I really love their moveset. I pick them because I haven't played with them before. I've been playing Pokemon for a very long time now. I've used a ton of Pokemon on a variety of different playthroughs. Switching it up and using someone that maybe I'm not the most fond of, but I've never used before, is something that I'm hoping to do in this game, and you'll see it in the coming months when eventually I do some team videos for these games. That being said, let me know what you guys think about my options down in the comments section below, my fixes for the Pokedex, and if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, it does a ton to support me, it does a ton to tell me what kind of videos you want to see in the future, and like I mentioned before, hit that subscribe button so you never miss another upload. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.